The hardest mountain to climb is the one within and it all starts with one step. Here is some of the people who took that first step. Welcome back! Yo, it's like about to just, nah, I'm only just lift off in these seats right now. <laughs> Alright, then I'll start. Welcome to the Walk Kamala Shoes documentary. And I want to introduce someone very special, Marlon. And I'm going to let Marlon introduce himself a little bit and he can tell, can say, can tell a bit of his story about himself. And I'm going to ask him a few questions. So, Marlon. For the people who don't know what you do and the great stuff what you do, give them a little introduction and I've got a couple of questions for you. Okay, my name is Marlon Patrice, I'm the founder of We Go Outside Too, encouraging the black community and people of colour to get out in nature. So Marlon invited me and the crew down to one of his hikes. We packed our bags, we hit the road and we drove all the way up to Leek to the Peak District. So we just got to the top now and just having a nice little break. The sun's out and just, just chilling, just chilling, taking it in. While I've been walking up the hike, I just feel all different emotions and stuff. I'm just thinking about the ups and downs through life and stuff and just, I don't know, just I guess reevaluating things and just grateful to see people out, smiling, happy. And it's just a good feeling, man. What made stuff. you get into it? It was because of, uh, my son passed away. My son passed away last year in January. He, he was stabbed. Year. Yeah, he was stabbed last year. So that was one of the reasons why I started the, um, the actual movement, the actual project. It was a thing like, because at the time I was dealing with a lot of trauma. Mm. And I was using like nature outdoors like to like get over it and overcome it and then the idea came 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 around like that to yeah people yeah to to other people like things. yeah to pass their traumas because like people are locked down and people are threatening they might lose their jobs and so like everyone was going through something at the time so i thought like yeah like put something together like for us all like to because it helped it's been helping me so i thought like yeah like get people, other people on board. I think my favourite part was when I took off my shoes. Oh, I took my shoes off yesterday. Just to come out here and just take a break from the city and just to go for a walk and see the mountains, you know, and it's just, it's just beautiful. But this is what life should be, though. Why, why should we be stressing? Why should we be running around and in all of that mad chaos? city life i could be you know i could have been bitter about the whole thing you know but like at the same time it was like um you know there's there's things that you that are out of your control and the only thing that you can control is your mind the way your mindset is so it was a thing about just using it as fuel to move forward so and like turn it into a positive Marlon is a perfect example from how someone can turn pain into power for the service of others. So we're outside by Devante's house now. We've come on, we're about to pick him up and we're about to go to where he likes to go to meditate, get away from the busy world and just become one with nature. 
and this guy has a very, very interesting story. So let's see. Meet Devante. Someone who's experienced the flip side of the coin. Devante was involved in the stabbing, which put a lot of things into perspective for him. And now he's here to tell us his transition. What makes you make that transition from your old life to your new life? What happened was like, when I got stabbed, that was the start of it. I feel like a lot occurred and it was so quick, but the lesson that I took from it, and when I just linked it back, it just made sense. Like something's got to change this. It's not right. It's not sitting right with me. You know what I'm saying? After you, after being stabbed? It was like, when I got stabbed, I felt like that was the end, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like I just blacked out, that was it. I spoke to God, if you believe or not, for the listeners, whatever, whatever their perspective is. I felt like I, I spoke to God in my, when I was blacked out, I was like, this is it, I understand it. But why do you come here? Why do you go, take your time out and go, to distances to do this just to get away from the reality that we we're in you know what i'm saying the concrete jungle like there's so much noise like you got cars the buses then you've got people saying their perspectives and then you've got all the anxiety of the world that brings for example what's been going on the past year you know what i'm saying and everyone's so stuck in fear so like it attaches on to you, you know what I'm saying? So like, now you're feeling anxious due to other people's vibrations. Mm. So like, when I come back to what is nature, it's like I'm feeling that one, I'm feeling whole inside myself. Like, I know that everything's just bliss. The tree doesn't get anxious about growing, it just grows, you know what I'm saying? And does what it does, innit? So like, so I just relaxed. It's like the noise is occurring. It's like the natural noise is outside. But when you try to listen to, let's say, meditation music mm. on YouTube, in a way that it does work to an extent, but when you're actually outside and you feel the real vibrations of that sound, it feels like the meditation's on a completely different level. Even though we've got cameras in our face and stuff like that, I still feel like I'm having a proper nice time. Just that one with it. Mm. It's like, what is actually going on in this moment? It depends what you think. I just see it as like, oneness, like I mean, like, all the trauma that is in my mind and all the anxieties that are in my mind, all the depressive thoughts, it just ceases to exist. It's just, just one with what is. You're hearing the noise of the birds, the birds flying, you're observing nature. You're seeing the birds fly. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just bliss, like, the trauma's not here and it, it ceases to exist because it doesn't exist. It only exists in the mind. Is there anything that you regret? Before, before he answers that question, he's probably gonna say no, because most people, most people today say they don't regret nothing. But I'll be honest, I do regret certain things, but maybe if I did change the past, you could be in a better position now, or you might not, but who knows? If you don't regret nothing, what you really do until you actually knew the outcome of that other path. So, I'd like to see what his answer is. See, I'd, I would say no, but when you say no, you're blocking all the other perspectives, and your perspective just opened my mind to a different, different perspective. Mm. It's like 
I say no because if you regret something, I don't want to regret anything. Yeah. Like, I've seen a lot of regret in my life and it's like, I don't want to be in that position to regret. Yeah. Once your mind thinks on regret, then there's no forward. What happened in the moments, it's like, a rush of adrenaline in, it's like, then when you feel super anxious, anxiety attack as they call it. Mm -hmm. It's like I felt like I had an anxiety attack, but it's just flowing through it, innit? It's just there, innit? Then something said just touch my back, innit? So I touched my back, look, boom, mad, it's all red. And then anxiety is still going on. I'm thinking, what do I even do? Like this situation is, I never thought it out this way. So I rang my uncle and I said, what go on? Like, shall I ring an ambulance or just pan up? And then I rang the ambulance. I've sat at the bus stop now. I'm just, I'm just accepting the occurrence, what's occurred and just accepting like, two police guys drove past the like, have you seen a gang that's been stabbing? I said, nah, 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 no gangs around here. I'm just just waiting at the bus stop and then I've started to black out. And then it's like, it's like I've seen God in that moment. Both to him, I said, if this is it now, this is it. I know I've done wrong in it. Then I've blacked out, like, that's it, innit? I'm, I'm gone, like, sleep, black or whatever you want to call it. And then boom, moments later, just wake up in the ambulance. It was like, that was the realization, like, something's got to give now. Something's got to change. So Cole, what are we doing today? We're about to go climb snow down here and we've got a few people coming. We've got four people and these four people are going through a few little things in life and stuff. So what we're going to do, we'll get, we're going to get them to do a little questionnaire, see how they feel before the climb. And when they get to the top, we're going to do the questionnaire again and see if there's any differences in the feelings, what they've got. So Snowdonia was an idea we had. We gathered some people from all walks of life and walked the journey together while facing our own battles within. In the journey, we wanted to explore the harshness and beauty climbing the mountain, symbolizing life. Cool. So what, we're at the um, bottom of Snowdonia now, and what we're gonna do, everyone's filling out a sheet, and on these sheets it just says, what emotion are you feeling right now before you climb Snowdonia? So we wanna kind, we wanna see what kind of feelings people have got, and when they get to the top, we'll see what feelings they got again. So we've got Caden, we've got Liam, we've got Matt, and we've got Shiloh. So yeah. If everyone can just fill it out and we can make our ascend. That's good. Right. Is, how I'm feeling at this moment in time. Go on. Contented. <coughs> How would you rate your stress levels? Um, I'm probably at about, probably at about six. Have you ever considered escaping to nature to reduce your stress levels? Why, why not? Yes, I have. And because Mother Nature is beautiful. <laughs> So, Cole, while they're doing the uh, questionnaires, what is your opinion? How are you feeling if you had to put, uh, if you had to do the questionnaire? What would your answers would be right now? Um, with my emotion, how I'm feeling right now, I feel I'm, I'm content. Have I got any things on my mind? Yes. And do I feel stressed? Yes, I do feel stressed with a few things that's going on what's going on with my personal life. So I'd like to see how I feel about this as well, climbing up. And plus, 
So go there out with good people and that. And um, how are you feeling? The camera, bro. How are you feeling? Well, um, you know what? Because I'm so excited to climb um, my first mountain, it's one of those things like I am, uh, I'm ready, <laughs> but I feel contented. But like you said, do I have worries? I got loads. But it's one of those things like it's my first step. I kind of see it as a very metaphorical thing. When I climb the mountain, it's gonna be, uh, it's sort of like me conquering something bigger than me. And I want to see how I'm gonna do this. So, as much as I'm a cameraman, I want to be a part of this. I'm gonna be joining you guys and uh, joining everyone in this beautiful journey. And I can't wait. See Peace. you upstairs. Peace. It's just saying like, yo, it's, it's gonna good. be a good day. In a sense of gratitude, in a state of gratitude, man, it's nice like to take your mind away and come somewhere like this. Yeah. Both I'm excited, man. I wanna get to the top. 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 So cool. Why we keep stopping? Hey, we keep stopping because there's a beautiful scenery around at every single bend of the mountain. So Cole, tell me about your experience meeting Marlin, Devante and our trip down to Snowdonia and has it changed you as a person? I wouldn't say that it's changed me, I'd say that it's made me respect people's mindset to go to nature, to deal with the trauma. Because when I used to go to nature, I used to go there to chill. I've never really looked at nature as a, a healing process. And just to look back at Marlon and Devante's journey, to see them, see how they use nature, it just makes me respect nature even more. But knowing you've been like, I don't know, let's say you've lost a family member like Marlon, or you're going through depression, or you're suffering from something, I didn't know that nature can really bring you back to life. Yes, I've learned a lot about nature and to be honest I've started to love the sound of silence. Hearing Devante's story and Marlon's story and the rest of the people who climbed the Snowdonia's story and it seems like nature's helped everybody and now it's like to help me. I 
I don't know, I guess my advice for anybody who's going through any hard times just get, just get a few of your friends and just go to nature and I can't explain the feeling what it gives you it's just something you need to find out for yourself thanks for watching Walk a Mile in the Shoe